be careful about how they do this because Batman is not a character that you will want to mess up anymore. You don't want another George Clooney or Val Kilmer situation. You don't. You just don't. And if you do, what up, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Shows. Brian, James Gunn, we all know, has been no holds barred when it comes to letting the people know what he's thinking. And it has seemed, especially during the unveiling of the chapter one, Gods and Monsters, or par partial unveiling of it, he had a lot to say. He, he and Peter Saffron, but James Gunn went all out and said some things that the WB seemed to be bothered by. Brian. What, 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 what do you think is going on here? I mean, listen, some of these individuals are still here. But, and hey, if he hasn't fallen short of calling himself out on, on, again, some of the things that went on over there in terms of participating in this free-for-all with DCIP. What do you think is going on over there, Brian? And, and, and will this fester and blow up and spread and again the day will come when Zaslav said enough is enough give me 20 no <laughs> give me 100 billion dollars look i mean I, we talked about it in our reaction show i we i was like i was shocked at how much inside baseball they they put out there. I was like, you just never hear a studio talk about its own inner workings like that. I don't care yeah. if it's talking in large part about the former regime. As you say, like the rank and file hasn't totally turned over. There were people still there that heard those comments. So what were the comments? I mean, they could have picked any number of them, to be mm -hmm. quite honest. The one that made the rounds. So the quote was, it was, it was kind of like a throwaway in an article about it where it said he quote, ruffled feathers inside, James Gunn, ruffled feathers inside Warner Brother during his presentation. Yeah. Which I'm not surprised at because as we said, like, I mean, he, he took aim at the approach to the IP over the better part of the last 10 to 15 years. And he crushed it. Like he basically was like the whole thing about they gave, they, you know, anyone who smiled at them, they gave IP to. <laughs> it's, it's not a compliment. Look, you know, but the, apparently it was actually Henry Cavill comments that, again, Henry Cavill always at the center of this stuff, and it's not really even his fault. But he made the comment about Henry Cavill being bleeped around. And that apparently was the phrase that really got people's hackles raised that he said that. Because um, he said, quote, for me, it was, for this story, it isn't Henry. I like Henry. He's a great guy. And I think he's gotten bleeped around by a lot of people, including former regimes of this company end quote that's mm -hmm. the one now he said former regimes but it, as you say there's definitely still people in the current employment count that heard that and felt some kind of way about it the other thing that apparently um, saffron said that still kind of was like salt in recent wounds was the he described batgirl as quote not releasable and that that also kind of drew some fire internally so i mean you know my response to that is like okay i I'm not surprised once we heard once we heard gun spiel i'm not surprised that there were people inside who didn't like it but i don't i think it's okay like i think like that it's the people outside honestly that that was for and yeah. i think they scored some points taking some ownership and being accountable and like my message to some of the people who are ruffled by this whose feathers were ruffled would be like okay like what is what is the other side of this story? Like you and I have kind of speculated Henry Cavill it may be difficult to work with. There are definitely signs of that, mm -hmm. but you can't say on a scale of one to a hundred that he wasn't screwed in some fashion. Like he clearly was like, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. like but you can't say that it's a, it's a one or a zero. Yeah, so yeah. Somebody did or did something to him that clearly he wasn't, at fault for yeah yeah so how can you get angry when someone puts that kind of states the obvious in a public domain 
I think Brian is more like, all right, well, let's get over this already. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully, James Gunn doesn't continue talking badly about what happened prior to this. Although I think it's inevitable that he possibly will. Because, you know, he has, he, he might want to, you know, he's going to answer questions, especially when he's, you know, about to, un, you know, unveil the, 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 the real stuff. Right. People are going to ask him. But regardless of that, yes, certainly people's feathers are going to be ruffled and they're going to be like, come on, man, we, we, you got to rub it in. Regarding the Batgirl comment, regardless if it was good or, or it wasn't, Brian, and the way they're talking about it, it was horrendous and it would have ruined the brand. Well, I mean, look, I mean, James Gunn doesn't wear the Batgirl decision. I mean, that's just yeah. the facts. He wasn't he wasn't anywhere near the creative head of position when when that decision was made. That's a Zasloff decision. So if you want to point the finger, you point the finger at the man upstairs. Now, if I was making a defense of the studio and I do think they handled it poorly, however you want to describe yeah. it. If you want to make a defense of the studio, the best defense the studio has is that Batgirl's testing scores were the same as Black Adam. That's the best defense the studio has. Now, we heard that before Black Adam came out and it kind of was like used as a positive for why like Batgirl should have had some hype. And then we saw Black Adam. And I would say that's a strike against Batgirl <laughs> if you're testing the same as Black Adam. So that's the, if I'm the studio, I would just point at that and say, well, none of y'all like Black Adam or very few of you liked it. And very few went to see it. So how can you say we weren't justified in canceling a project that was seen as no better than that? That would be their, that would be their argument, I think. But Brian, that that movie only made the money it did because of that Superman cameo. That's the only reason the movie made what it made. And because the and because the Rock was inflating both Dude. Superman and the Justice League's potential influence on on the movie. So the opening week, the opening weekend was definitely significantly higher than I think it would have otherwise been because yeah. of that. In fact, you saw it. The tracking numbers went up from like the low 50s to, to what became 67 million in the US and higher. So, I mean, he basically, they should thank Dwayne Johnson for that because, I mean, he probably got them another $50 million or $60 million of opening weekend box because of that kind of false, false flag. Yeah. Um, now, I did, going back to the gun thing, though, it's a delicate thing, but this is, you know, we talk about, you know, James Gunn lives by the tweet and dies by the tweet. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit of the downside of this approach. When you put a guy in this position who is going to use his platform to be transparent and communicative with the fans, this is an aspect of that, that he needs to measure very carefully. So what I can't tell yet is I look, I don't think James Gunn is naive enough to believe that he would get up on a, in front of a mic, say those comments at that opening announcement and think that no one would notice, right? He knows he's got enough experience, which makes me think he did it deliberately. And if he did it deliberately, did he only do it because he wanted to clearly draw a line between what was and what will be as in it's a one-time thing mm -hmm. or was he setting a precedent to suggest that as the DCU moves forward, if other characters or projects are not well received, is he going to point the finger at himself, but also some of the people responsible for these future projects as to why they didn't work? And hence, creators get ready to be <laughs> held accountable which they're not going to like, but I'm yeah. curious to see if this is the beginning of an approach to here's what we didn't get right. Here's what we're wrong. I'm curious if he'll do it the first time one of these projects does not deliver at the box office and with critics. I would only think, Brian, that this would occur with Superman not being successful. That's the only time I think he has that opportunity to sort of put them in the same bucket of reasons why it didn't succeed. I don't think, I think it would be too late to sort of bring that up after four or five films. You know, I, it, Superman has to hit. Superman doesn't hit, none of it works. I think, Brian, for me, in, in my opinion, if Superman doesn't hit, it's all over. Yeah, I think you're right. 
I think. Uh, Brian. Ezra Miller. Uh, this idea of this Batman. And I think it's being teased at the end of the film for con possible continuation into Brave of the Bold. I'm not sure. Uh, but that's what I've heard. And that they're looking to bring back a former Batman alum into the fold. The name's being dropped. And the only one that makes sense is... Yeah. Christian Bale. You know where I stand, Brian, with regards to who they should cast for, for Batman? Because it only makes sense. And if you want me interested, you just can't take me back. You just can't. Alan Richardson is the Batman that you need to get. Nobody else. Christian Bale, come on. I'm not interested in seeing the Christian Bale that is a bit funny and, and throwing jokes out there. I don't know, Brian. I don't think that works for me. Your thoughts on the possibility of this happening in this Flash movie that we're going to get, which everybody continues to say, Brian, that they're speaking. This is this is like a great movie, Brian. I'm going to go check it out. But this idea of Chris, bringing back Kristen Bell and having this whole Bat family again, it's just like, to me, it's just almost, yeah, I get we have the the the... The Batman, we got Matt Reeves and stuff. We're getting Batman-focused stories. There's just so much other story to tell with the Batman or Batman himself that I think you're doing too much. What are your thoughts on this whole situation? So by the time you see this show, the first full trailer of The Flash will be out. It's coming with the Super Bowl. Uh, they just put out the first official poster an interesting poster you see the shadow the bat signal shadow looming over the back of ezra miller so there's a very powerful message being sent even though we know this is a multiversal story that batman it plays a major role which we kind of knew with michael keaton and ben affleck but now comes word as you say that there could be an end credit stinger to introduce the dcu batman for brave and the bold which if it's based on the Grant Morrison run is an older Bruce Wayne who is more lighthearted and a little less serious. And uh, the, the rumor that's going around, as you said, kind of was like, it's one of Bale, Kilmer or Clooney. We know it can't be Kilmer uh, due to his health. Uh, I would be stunned if it was Clooney going for another, <laughs> another run after Batman and Robin. So that leaves Bale, but where the where the rumor kind of fails for me is i i talked before about i don't think you want confusion reigning in your new dcu and to me christian bale in brave and the bold is confusion because the christian bale version of batman that we got in the dark knight trilogy which was excellent is not lighthearted. yeah is not a father figure yeah. And so to bring him back and say, well, no, that's that version of Bruce Wayne. And he's now playing a totally different version of Bruce Wayne, but it's still the same actor. But forget everything you knew about his Christopher Nolan world, because that doesn't apply to this character. That's confusing to people. Yeah. I think they will be looking for the... Where were the other drugs going? Ah. Brother. That voice again, you know, they'll be looking for his, his same tendencies. And I... I don't buy that if you want Damian Wayne to be this crazy, off-the-wall, credible Robin lead and also son of Bruce that they need this to be. So I think if they do it, it's a mistake, but I'm a little skeptical of the rumor for that reason. To be good. Yeah. Brian, let's see what happens with this, man. I, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people who may be excited about the possibility of this happening but then trying to make sense of it all is where the problem lies uh for me i'm just simply not interested and i think they should certain they should be careful about how they do this because batman is not a character that you will want to mess up anymore you don't want another george clooney or val kilmer situation you don't 
You just don't. And if you do... One hundred billion dollars. Conceptually, the idea of introducing the DCU Batman at the end of the Flash, that's a maybe. I could see that if this Flash movie is as is both as bat centric as they're promoting and is a reset. Yeah. That actually could be a stinger that is both like a celebrity ish stinger, but it actually goes somewhere or actually is like, okay, like we're we're this is we're leading somewhere with this. Maybe I could see that. Uh, we know they've been messing with the cameos, right? I mean Henry Cavill's cameo was axed. I guess you've heard Gal Gadot's cameo maybe out as well, but Maybe Aflax is still in. That's the rumor is in now. We've heard both, you know, so we'll see. But we know they're playing around with that. So. There's a lot of intrigue, Brian. I, 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 would you be surprised, Brian, if this movie did well in the theaters? If it's a good movie, being that we've had all this Ezra Miller uh, situation in our faces and it's certainly not going to disappear, especially when the movie comes out. It'll be interesting some, to hear what uh, some of the actors and the director have to say regarding that situation when asked. Let's see if that yeah, well, situation said, is controlled. Yeah, I, I mean, I, you know, I said this would be a very, you know, this is going to be one of the more awkward promotional tours, and it's going to be one of the more awkward critical reads of a movie because, as we've heard, the comparisons in terms of quality have been Spider-Man No Way Home and The Dark Knight. So, you know, you can roll your eyes all you want, but those are the names being floated. So obviously, if the movie is in that class, that means that more than 90% of the people that reviewed that movie are going to give it a thumbs up, which means in order for that to happen, you can kind of infer that Ezra Miller has to be given some kind of performance because he's yeah. playing multiple versions of The Flash. I can't imagine the movie is great if they stink which means critics will have to laud the performance and basically wash their hands of praising it yeah. at the same time. Yeah. That's what's going to have to happen. And that's going to be awkward. And in the promotional tour, I don't know how much Ezra Miller is going to be allowed to participate or able to participate, but that if he doesn't participate, that means everyone else associated with the project will also have to answer questions about both his performance and his conduct, which is, doubly awkward yeah. so everything about this is going to be like strange yeah. but if the hype is real i don't think it's going to hurt the box office i really don't i just yeah. don't think people like hollywood is so screwed up i just don't think people like if if you actually took a stand and didn't go to see movies based upon the personal lives of people in hollywood you would not spend a dime at the theater in your lifetime yeah <laughs> Word, word. I think we're being presented with a situation, Brian, because I heard there was some talk of Ezra Miller not knowing what he was doing sometimes on set and being acting a bit weird. I think Andy Muschietti was was really demanding a certain performance that Ezra perhaps wasn't expecting to perform, and he may be a better flash for it. And because of it, I think there's going to be calls for him to return, maybe. Ryan, we may get those, but at the end of the day, I, I, I seriously doubt uh, they're going to go in that direction. I have a sneaky suspicion that the loudest calls for a return are actually going to be for Ben Affleck. Because the if rumor is he has a legit awesome arc in this movie. Like he's in it, in it for like a good 20 minutes. And it's a realization of the potential of his character. And we just got done with all this Snyderverse stuff, but, and they're going to reset it. So I don't think there's any way they could, but I just have this sneaky suspicion that he delivers a real performance as a version of Batman in this movie. That's the character. There'll be the biggest outcry to have back. And if we do get this Brian this will be the difference between uh, the difference between two filmmakers and the effect they have on on these characters people are going to start pointing that out Brian and I also would say yeah so here's the question what if the Muschietti Affleck version of Batman is actually appropriate for Brave and the Bold. Is there any shot that this rumor is a false, is like a false 
bait and switch and he and and the real batman alum being brought back to be batman is, is actually him. ben affleck i wouldn't put him past it brian they want him to direct something they we know that they've talked to him about being involved in the dcu as a director which i think would be a good move but like in a weird way if he if he if his personality is recast in this film I'd believe that in Brave and the Bold more than I'd believe a return to Christian Bale from from Dark Knight here. And Chain just saying like, oh, it's Christian Bale, but he's playing a different Bruce Wayne. Yeah. But yeah. I still think it's a long shot, but yeah, he's yeah, asking yeah. the question. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of this possibility. Hit that like and subscribe button. And we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report. There's a new sheriff in town. <laughs>